Well, folks, good day to you, one and all. And uh, wow, one of the favourites that we're going to be doing tonight, Touring Car Championship. Malembo Lodge coming on board and uh, doing the uh, third out of five rounds. We're at Donington Park this evening, coming to you live from the second year production studios down here in the friendly city of Cape Town. With me, Mike Side, the man that's going to be doing some uh, commentating, Ali George, for the Nationals, two for SA Nationals on Saturday. If uh, FC Newboat not been joining us tonight, it's Frankie Yenis. Frankie, good evening to you. Yes, good evening, Gary, and good evening, everybody else at home. And, uh, yeah, welcome to the Donington Park Circuit in the UK. The track is 3.94 kilometers long. Track temperature is just over 20. It's about 23, 93 meters above sea level. Outside temperature 17. They say 100% chance of rain, but that's unlikely because it's very, very misty out there. Cloudy with a 20 odd kilometer an hour wind. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see when we go to round three of the touring car challenge. The man out on circuit is the man from Malemba Lodge himself. And that is uh, Yaku Stein. And Yaku's out there with the Hyundai. And uh, he's the first man out on circuit uh, to try and post the time. Eight minutes, uh, Carl Walsher. Lovely to see Carl back out on track again. He hasn't been out racing for quite some time. And uh, Kyle is out there in the Audi. Then another Audi is um, Nathan Victor. A young man that does a GTI challenge. He's out there with the Rockstar sponsored Audi. And then Werner Zwart. He's out there with the Hyundai. But he's going nowhere at this point in time. He's standing completely still out on the circuit. And then Gary Herman Lazarus. Making his way around in the Audi. Yep, the man from cheapcars.co.za. The guys that uh, made it possible for GTI Challenge to go up to Alice Kribanti uh, two Saturdays back. And made it possible for me to join them there as well. So, cheapercars.co.za. Stephen McCarthy, one of the uh, big six that uh, helped to build the second year production studio to where it is, Sue Jean Properties. Fantastic to have uh, him uh, out there on circuit as well. Sandra Bakari, a man that helps uh, quite a bit in the background when uh, Dr. Mike Berrier is uh, unavailable to be out there. Jason Pizzia, and look at that uh, livery. That is a beautiful livery that they've got on that uh, motor car. All the teammates driving with the uh, same livery, just the mirrors that change. There you see, there's the red mirrors. That's Umpi Swat that's coming towards us. But don't count this young flyer out, Troy Dolacek. Yeah, Dolacek uh, didn't have a very good outing um, yesterday. He's in the Haas uh, Audi. Uh, at the uh, six hour, it went rather horrible for him. He ended down in eighth position in the elite category. But uh, rest assured that uh, Troy is going to uh, bounce back this evening. That I can promise you, that I can guarantee you. So we are at Donington Park. It's got all these uh, famous uh, lines and curves and names as the times come through. And Yuan Furi has done the quickest time out there. He's done a 136.926 has Johan Furi. He is the fastest man out on track. Umpi Swat at this stage of the game, two tenths of a second slower than Johan Furi. And virtually the same is a dollar check. It sits out there in that uh, third position. And Byron Mitchell has just popped up there with a personal best of 137.642. And Byron is so far in provisional fourth position. Yaku Stein also out there on circuit in the Viani colors. That's a completely different looking motor car. That looks like a Hyundai i30, in fact, that he's got out there. Francois Hubert, provisionally on the third of the grid on the outside with the Honda. And uh, that's the Alpha Tauri colors. He likes that one. Tristan de Nobriga from the uh, famous de Nobriga family finds himself in the fourth row of the grid alongside provisionally Peter Hubert. And then the man from Sujin Properties, Stephen McCarthy, one of the big six with a young Carl Wilcher class B contender for GTI Challenge at Kalani International Raceway, Mr. Luke Lucchese. You can never count him out. Yeah, so far Luke is in that 8th position. He's just done a 138. Uh, has Luke Lucchese sitting out there in P8. is 1.2 seconds off for Yuan Furi. That is the man that's there in pole. Then the uh, Gazoo racing outfit there of Robbie Teens. He is in 12th position. 
and he's 2.2 seconds behind Furi. That's there in pole, and another faster slap out there for Yuan Furi. Francois Hubert just uh, jumps up onto the second row of the grid, and Jason Kutsia comes to join him as well. So they've just now done their uh, second ones. Umpi Swart puts in the fastest lap time, so it goes even quicker. So provisionally, at this stage of the fight, they've probably both now done two uh, laps out there. Wow, look at this. Umpi Swart, Johan Furi on the front row of the grid provisionally. Byron Mitchell, that man, and a Troy Dolinchik in the horse car. On the second row of the grid, the Francois Hubert that was with uh, Luke Lucchese to win out in the Masters Series yesterday in the six hours of the Mar. Willem Boerter, the man from uh, Toyota Kazoo Racing, he is the crew chief for Toyota Kazoo South Africa. Jason Kutsia from the Durant Motorsport side of the world with the comeback kid. Rob B. Teings predicting the fourth row of the grid. He's now finished his time. I see Jakob Stein. Is in the pits as well. Tristan de Nobrega in the top 10 with the Repsol car. Surely Luke Lucchese, yep, he's still out on circuit. I'm sure he's going to bump himself inside of that top 10. Yeah, in that dark, uh, gloomy mist comes Luke Lucchese out there. So far, Luke is Oops. in that third position, picking up a touch of dirt. Boom. There is Luke Lucchese, and uh, he's five tenths of a second there behind Umpi Swart in that third position and luke jumps back to the pit lane that's tristan de Nobriga. he's there in the uh, repsol sponsored honda he is a tristan and he is in 11th position 1.488 seconds off pole sitter yuan uh, yuan listen to me yuri swart who well, just pumped in another quickest lap of a 136.247 wow that's awesome stuff Pinter mazade note in the Stu davidson racing car he was on the second year talk show uh, just last week, was that young dad. And, uh, well, he's got a world championship title behind his name in uh, karting already. And only 21 years of age. He says he's got 17 years of experience. And how old are you? He says, um, I'm, I'm, I'm 21. So he started racing at the age of four. He says, yep, yeah. Age of four was when it started. So Nathan Victor's still going to put in a time. And Nathan Victor is, in fact, in the pit lane. Uh, Renier Bay, he's stopped as well. Etienne Swart, he's still out there. So it looks like a couple of the guys have not been able to put in the lap times. Uh, time yesterday, ooh, it looks like Etienne Zwart's got connectivity problems. Look at that. So I hope he's not going to be jumping around uh, too much on the screen. Robbie Teens looks like uh, he's still out there on circuit, but uh, very few of the guys have not finished their lap times. There's a greatly uh, different color scheme as the qualifying comes to an end. Right, that is eight minutes done. Remember, we've got two 20-minute uh, races in a uh, touring car, and the front row of the grid is uh, Duran Motorsports' uh, Yuri Umpiswat with Yuan Furi on his outside. Second row is Troy Dolacek and Byron Mitchell. Third row, Luke Lucchese, Tristan Donabriga. Fourth row is Jason Kutsia and Clinton Besaidenot. Yep, then we move along to uh, running out the top in France where you're there with Willem Boerter. Robbie Teens with the uh, man himself, Jakub Stein. Stephen McCarthy and Peter Hubert round out the top seven rows of the grid. Then row eight is Carl Walsher and Sandra Bakari. Row nine, Willem Pina and Herman Lazarus. Row 10, Werner Zwart and Davi Hubert. Row 11, Andrew Thomas and Nathan Victor. And row 12, Swayze Hubert and Andrew Murray. Can you believe it? Renier Hubert and Etienne Swart that had the uh, connectivity problems then bringing up the tail end of the field. So, wow, this is going to be something else. Look at that. What a brilliant sight. Well, that's proper English weather. That's, in fact, what it looks like down there. Yeah, very, very misty out there. Oof, it's going worse. to be a standing start. We're not going to see much from that. The chopper cam lights are on and lights are off. And away they go. And a lovely swat start there by Yuri Swart. And look at Troy Dollar checking the horse car. He's gone from third to second. He might even take the lead away. No, he's not. He's going to drop down back into that third position just ahead there of Byron Mitchell. As they start working their way through the world-famous Grano Curves. Through the Grano Curves, a lot of them go. That's Willem Boerta that sits there in that ninth position position just behind Clinton beside it. And Jason could see a dollar check is gone. And uh, so, uh, not dollar check, um, the Nobriga has gone. And so has Clinton beside it. Yep, beside note was out in that one as well. So back to the lead cars. It's Umpi Swart that leads that one out there. Is a Umpi Swart. It's Johan Ferry that's right in there behind him. Somebody just ran very wide. 
I think it was Hammond Lazarus was the last man that just Luke went Luke Lucchese went very wide. Yeah, and he's now come back on circuit as well. So there's Umpi Swart, it's Johan Ferry, Troy Dolinjic in the house car. The next of the Durant Motorsports, it's Byron Mitchell. Then a bit of a gap to the Kazoo car that is Willem Boerter. Then another of the Durant Motorsport cars. Just look at all those cars climbing through there. Lovely to see those brake lights come on in the mist ahead of you. But uh, you can still see when there's uh, smoke, flames and steam in front of you. No doubt about it. Front end of the field, it's Umpi Swart. Right, they're heading down towards Melbourne Heppen. Through Melbourne Heppen they go. They are heading towards the end of the lap. Melbourne Heppen is the second last uh, Heppen on the track. They'll be working their way now towards the left-handed Heppen. That's called Goddard's. And then from there, they'll go down onto the main straight. So let's have a look and see. There they go through uh, with uh, Bakari. And right in there behind him is... Uh, uh, Clinton beside note and Davi Hubert is right in there as well. So we're going to have a look at the lap times. Judy Swat is the quickest man out there so far with a 144.144. That's to run motorsports, Umpi Swart. And then look at that. If the interval times come up now, we'll see that there's nothing between Fareed Mitchell and Dolacek. As uh, Mitchell sits there on the outside, Dolacek had a go at him. There is only a tenth of a second between Dolacek and Mitchell and a tenth of a second between Mitchell and Johan Furi. As we ride aboard here with Dolacek, he must be very careful here for track limits as he's hassling the back end there of Byron Mitchell's car. Mitchell is all over the back end there of Johan Furi. It is Johan Furi in the Honda. Mitchell and Dolacek out there in the Audis and they're sitting in P2, 3 and 4. Meantime, Umpi is clearing away from them. He's 2.1 seconds ahead there of Yuan Furi. Well, I tell you what, it's a brilliant fight at this stage of the fight for the lead. And uh, there's just so many cars out there. Can't believe it. Umpi Swart leads them out. And somehow he's managed to get just a little bit of a gap on the rest of the field. Here they come, Linus Stern. It's Yuan Furi. It's Byron Mitchell. There comes Troy Dolentik. Willem Boerte has a look up on the inside line. And Willem Boerte is going to take that position away. The next man in there is uh, Willem Boerte. Uh, the Francois Hubert is the next one in that... Uh, uh, Hyundai that's coming through there and well I tell you what the Hyundai's aren't doing all that bad whatsoever in uh, the Malembo Lodge touring cars round number three of five from Donington Park. Working their way out of Goddard's they're going down the weak cross straight now that's the home straight into turn number one that's uh, a Redgate corner working their way out of Redgate then they go into that world famous Grano Curves they will be weaving their way down the Grano Curves into the old hairpin they go it's Swart and Furi. We're going to have a look uh, here at uh, Hammer Lazarus. And he was very, very slow. As a matter of fact, he almost stopped on the circuit there, did uh, Lazarus. There's something very wrong there. There's no yeah. drive there in that uh, vehicle of Hammer Lazarus. I think that sounds like gearbox that's gone on that motor car. And I think he's got a major, major problem there. As we go back towards the front end of the field, you can see Umpi Swart's up, dusted and disappeared at the front. Oh, look at that. Byron Mitchell and Johan Furi. Johan Furi on the inside line. Dolinchik in the horse car comes up behind him. He's bringing Dolinchik through with him. And Willem has got the best seat in the house. Let's see what it looks like from uh, Willem Boerter inside the comp. But look at that. He goes up now on the inside of Dolinchik. Backs out of that. He knows the young uh, uh, chaser will go all Ooh, the way up on the inside Fareed. line. That's that Furi that's gone off. Yes, that yes. was Furi that's gone off. There's Furi. He's now looking at them from the back. Well, not exactly where uh, Johan Furi wants to be because Luke is right there with him. It's the Alpha Tori outfit of uh, Francois Hubert. There is nothing between second, third, fourth, uh, fifth and sixth position. Dolacek, Berta, Mitchell, Furi and Hubert are not too far behind them. And P7, only 1.2 seconds, is uh, Luke Lucchese. He's launching a comeback. Remember that Luke, there you see Luke coming down towards us. He had a problem out there in the opening lap, did Luke Lucchese. As we go a bit further down, there's a battle here for ninth position. And uh, should I say 10th position, uh, Sandra Bakari is having a look at Steve McCarthy, who's only 1.2 seconds behind Yaku Stein. So that's a lovely fight out there. And then there's a lovely one for that 13th position, Gary. Swayze Joubert has got them racked and stacked in there. Uh, Andrew Thomas, Werner Swart, they're all in there, the two of them fighting there for that... Uh, 
uh, 14th position of uh, Nathan Victor. Now make it the 13th position of Sway Schubert. Byron Mitchell uh, loses it and uh, goes off. He was actually busy with a passing maneuver at that uh, position that he was trying to uh, get around on the outside. It didn't work. Let's have a look at René Rubin. This was a situation that happened just a little bit uh, earlier on. Let's see what happened with René. Yep, he runs it right off the circuit. And then uh, the next crash that we had thereafter was in fact a Willem Pinar. So uh, let's see what happens with Willem. That's the DHL car. It's quite a high speed entry into that corner. Oh, he just lost it completely under braking. And uh, well, that didn't work out for him whatsoever for Willem Pinar. The next one that, that was involved in the incident earlier on is a Davi Jube of the uh, Jube clan. And they were very tight going in there. Just gets uh, a little nibble onto the Stu Davidson car and that turns him right around and uh, he takes somebody else out with him at the same time. I think that was Peter Hubert that he I, made contact I with. I also tend to think so. Yes, let's go back to the front end of the field. Where's Umpiswat? Up, dust and disappear. He's doing uh, the same thing that we had in the six hour yesterday where there's one person that's just notably quicker than everybody else. Second place right now, Troy Dolinchik in the house car. There's the battle behind it. And Johan Ferry with the other guys having problems has now got himself up to third. But uh, looking back from his motor car, look how close they are. Yeah, he was in that second position at one, one point in time. There was Johan Ferry sits now in that third position. And he's been hassled there by Willem Boerta and Francois Hubert. And Lucas joined the party as well in P6. It is Luc Lucchese. Lucas only nine tenths of a second behind Francois Hubert. As we ride on board here with Luc Lucchese. Lucas having a serious look there at the Francois Hubert. Right ahead of Francois Hubert, we've got Willem Boerta. And right ahead of Willem Boerta, we've got uh, Johan Ferry who is 2.4 seconds behind Dolacek and Dolacek is losing out heavily here to Umpi Swart as we stay on board here with the man in P6 that is Luke Lucchese, 7 tenths of a second between himself and Francois Hubert. Well, let's have a little bit, a, a little bit further back, Swiss Hubert, the man that's also in uh, close contention there with uh, the back end of the recovering Byron Mitchell. Now you saw that Byron Mitchell had that uh, off he was uh, well on his way into a decent position. Let's have a look at that one from a different point of view. There's Byron Mitchell, and he gets nibbled by the Toyota Kazoo car, and that's what turns him off sideways, and uh, that cost him pretty heavily. You're near your bear, also having uh, a bit of an incident. I think that was just running right off the circuit, was near your bear, and uh, he got that back onto the track pretty quickly and didn't lose too much time with that. So while Umpi Swart blows away at the front, uh, there we've got uh, Sway Shubay, that car must be damaged coming into the pits. It's Umpi Swart leading them out, doing a lovely job. And uh, from Umpi back to Troy Dolinchik, that's five seconds. Back to Johan Ferry. There you see Johan Ferry. He's broken slightly away uh, from the uh, car directly behind him. That's Francois Joubert. Willem Boerte in the Gazoo car having a little bit of a look at, on the inside line of Francois Joubert. And right there with them is uh, Luke Lucchese. Luke six tenths of a second behind Willem Boerte and closing up on them ever so slightly in that seventh position as Jason Kutsia. He's 2.4 seconds behind Luke Lucchese. Is that man from Durant Motorsport? He's, uh, Luke, uh, he's uh, Jason Kutsia. Jakub Steins is out there in P8. He's a full four seconds behind uh, Kutsia. And then Stephen McCarthy, 1.7 seconds behind Stein. So McCarthy could crawl up onto the back end of Stein. Then in P10, it's Clinton Beside Note. And Lucas all over the back of Beside Note. Sandra Bakari and uh, Byron Mitchell. They are in the house as well. Sandra, 1.2 behind Beside Note. And Mitchell, four tenths. Make it now five tenths of a second behind Bakari as Umpi Swart puts in the quickest lap time. Oh, he's just rolling those laps out there and 5.3 second gap has got already uh, Nathan Victor and uh, Byron Mitchell very close to one another. One of the guys that does a little bit of uh, a set of course and uh, doing some parting on the local circuits is that man Andrew Thomas and uh, he's in that 14th position that's the yellow and black he's just dived now towards the inside line on the GTI Challenge Racer, the racer Nathan Victor. Looks like a Davidson board sponsorship car that uh, he's got out there. And uh, Nathan Victor doing a pretty decent job, although he finds himself in the top 50, not where he would like to be. Van Swart that had uh, that difficulty with the uh, 
connectivity earlier on finds himself just a little bit further back but the real dice is around about there there's Willem Boerte Willem Boerte was Luke Lucchese closing in from behind yeah Willem Boerte and Luke Lucchese and they all over the back end there of uh, Johan Fury and uh, should I say on the back end of France are you bad because Fury in that third position is now getting away there from uh, Francois, you're bad, which is understandable. Francois cannot afford to go with you, Anfuri. He has to defend that fourth position against uh, Willem Boerta and Luke Lucchese. And uh, we look there from the bonnet cam of uh, Willem Boerta as he has a look there at the Francois Hubert. Only five tenths of a second between Hubert and Boerta as they make their way into that next uh, hairpin. That would be Goddard's. Yes, that's Goddard's. That's going down the home straight now. Racing down into turn number one, and that is Redgate Corner. As they work their way out of Redgate Corner, then it's a slight uh, uh, kink to the right, and then from there they start working their way down Crono Curves. Through Crono Curves they go now, still very misty conditions here in England at uh, the famous Donington Park circuit. Through Crono Curves they go, working their way towards the old hairpin over the old hairpin they go now then a slight the king to the left running down and over starkey's bridge and then they'll make their way into mclean's mclean's coming up now that's a right hander that's mclean's corner then from there a little bit of an uphill run and they turn right into turn eight which is copper's uh, corner working their way out of copper's corner they'll run down the starkey straight we're heading now towards the end of the lap from Starkey Strait, they'll do that left right S's. The left right S's will be coming up shortly. There it comes now into the left hander, chucking it now into the right hander. Then uh, they've got a little bit of a, a straight there, which will take them into turn number 10, <clears throat> which is Melbourne Hairpin. Through Melbourne Hairpin they go now. Then there's a little bit of a straight before they go into turn 11, which will be the final, final corner. Got odds and then back onto the home straight. Well, there you go, a lap on board with uh, Willem Boerte. And oh, running very, very wide. He's going to climb up on the inside and uh, take away uh, that position. I'm not sure who it was that he actually went past there, but uh, he made that one stick very, very neatly. A 1 minute 36.8 by Troy Dolanchik, a 36.9 by Francois Hubert and uh, Johan Ferry, a 37. Two by Willem Boerte. So Willem Boerte in trying to protect that position is actually falling just a little bit off that uh, group of front runners. Byron Mitchell trying to make his way back. He finds himself there behind Clinton Bezaydenote. And then there's another battle going on uh, just behind them. And uh, that is that battle over there. And that is the one between Andrew Thomas and uh, Sandro Bakari with Nathan Victor in there directly behind them. There's Nathan Victor. And he's closing up onto the back of that, trying to make up a position. Yeah, they're chasing down <clears throat> the man from uh, Cobbs and Coffee for Race Driver SA and Racebook Media. That is uh, Andrew Thomas. And he's there in that 12th position, fighting off Sandra Bakari, Nathan Victor, and Werner Swart. There is contact. There is contact. And Victor gets sent back in there towards the infield, sawing away at that steering wheel to try and. Uh, regain some kind of control of that motor car of his that audi there you can see where the contact started then there was a second amount of contact just tipping up against the wall trying to hold the tail end together and then uh, coming back in onto the circuit let's see how it affected the uh, sandro bakari sandro bakari finds himself uh, going right across the track and then being uh, hammered so there'll probably be a bit of damage uh, to that car as well then there was also incident with the uh, Vanna Zwart. Now that must have been a separate incident. Uh, yep, there's Vanna just uh, overdoing it, going right off the track, keeps the hammer down. A lovely recovery that, I must say. He made it look pretty easy, going back to the front end of the field. Look at that wide open circuit in front of him. Well, that other car that made contact with Sandra Bakari uh, earlier on there, that would have been uh, uh, Denobriga. Would have been Tristan de Nobriga. But back to the sharp end of the field. That is a Yuri Swart. He's a five and a half seconds ahead there of Troy Dollar check in the Haas Audi that's there in that second position. Then the first of the Hondas is Yuan Furi that sits there in that third position. 
And then 2.6 seconds behind him in a P4 is Willem Boerta. And right on his case, there only six tenths of a second in P6 is Luke Lucchese. Luke Lucchese also in the Honda. That's a second Honda out there. Then Jason Kutsia in the Audi for Durant Motorsport. He sits there in P6. Big gaps now because Jacques Stein is 2.3 seconds uh, behind Jason Kutsia with the Francois Joubert in P8, 2.7 behind Stein. And then in P9, you've got Steve McCarthy, 2.6 behind Joubert. And then here's a bit of a fight for that last uh, position in the top 10. That is Clinton beside note and Byron Mitchell. And uh, beside note 10th, Mitchell 11th, and only 7 tenths of a second separating beside a note from Mitchell. That almost looked like a bit of left foot breaking as he came through the apex of the corner. So uh, beside note feeling the pressure and uh, no doubt about it with uh, Byron Mitchell you got to know that you give him a half a chance he's going to work his way in there and uh, make it stick let's see if we can get any camera shots from the chopper mm -mm, the weather is yeah, not, not getting better help. it's a matter uh, of fact it's getting worse out there that's that's typical british weather you so, think it might actually rain uh no not if there's mist you won't have rain if there's mist uh, but uh, at this point in time luke lucchese is making it very misty out there for willem Boerta because where does he look does he look into the gloom of the mist or does he have a look at that orange Honda that's right in there behind him of Luke Lucchese going slightly uphill into the right hand as they go. I think that's making their way out of Coppice. Yes, that's coming out of Coppice. They now be working their way down the uh, Starkey Strait. That is a long, long straight there. Uh, heading down towards the SS Gary and uh, Byron Mitchell is all over the back end there of a Clinton beside note as well. And he turns it in tighter than Clinton coming out of the corner. Is that one going to be able to work for him? Clinton is uh, looking like he's on the uh, right line to get the turn in. Yep, he does. So Byron Mitchell uh, desperately trying to get into the top 10, but Clinton beside note's not going to be an easy target whatsoever. 17 minutes, 57 done in this 20-minute sector. Right, we've got two more minutes to go, and there's a lovely fight there between Clinton Beside Note and Byron Mitchell. Byron Mitchell representing uh, Durant Motorsport as he sits all over the back end there of, uh, of Beside a Note. Uh, it does Mitchell only four tenths of a second between Beside a Note and Mitchell. Well, Carl Wilcher had himself an incident uh, earlier on. Let's see what uh, was the situation with Carl. Is that a pretty quiet one? Oh, just too hard and too late on the brakes and uh, slowing it right down, staying out of everybody's way, and there he gets it going again. So that cost him uh, two positions out there on track. So 18 minutes, 42 done, and we've actually forgotten about this man. His name's uh, Umpi Swart, and he's taken 5.3 seconds out of the best of the rest, which is uh, that man over there, Troy Dolinchik. Well, you've got the best of them sitting in P1, 2, and 3 so far. So far, you got got Yuri Swart in P1, Troy Dolinchik in second, Yuan Furi in third, Willem Boerta in fourth, but Boerta's not been left alone because Luke Lucchese is giving him all sorts of hassles. There's only nine tenths of a second between Boerta and Lucchese fighting there for Boerta's fourth position. And then there's only one other fight out there on the track, and that's a one in tenth position between uh, Byron Mitchell and Clinton Beside Note. But uh, we'll work our way all the way through to them. There is a François Hubert coming through on your screen now. Is Stephen McCarthy, and then that fight that I was talking about between Byron Mitchell and Clinton Beside, not five tenths of a second between them. But there's 45 seconds left before Yuri Swart sees a checkered flag. All depends where Umpi is on the circuit. He might have to do another lap. Let's have a look and see where he is. He's heading now towards McLean's. He's going through the left handed kink. And then that's a left handed kink he's going through now. So he will be heading towards a checkered flag as he works his way through McLean's corner. Yeah, that's a little uphill that takes you towards Coppers. Working his way now towards Coppers, Gary. He'll turn. It's a double right-hander is Coppers. It's very similar to Kalani's turn four. There's only one line through Coppers' corner. And then down Starkey Strait, he goes towards the S's and heading now strongly towards the end of the lap. 
Well, I'll tell you what, he's done a brilliant job. He's just somehow being in a class of his own in this one. Uh, nobody's really been able to have a go at uh, the times that he's put up. And, uh, well, look at that. The car beautifully clean. Maybe a little bit damp from the uh, conditions. But, uh, well, uh, unfazed whatsoever out front as he works his way uh, pretty much uh, towards the start finish line. Yeah, I went through the Melbourne hairpin. And there's turn 11 coming up. That is Goddard. Through Goddard he goes... There's the home straight, and the checkered flag is out to meet and greet your race winner, Yuri Umpiswart. Oh, the rest of the pack now starting to work their way through. There comes uh, Troy Dolinchik. He comes through. Uh, then uh, Johan Ferri is the next man through behind that. Willem Boerter did a brilliant drive and managed to uh, hold on ahead of Luke Lucchese. Jason Kutsia will come home for Duran Motorsport there in P6. P7 will go to Yaku Stein. P8 will go to Francois Hubert. P9 to Stephen McCarthy, who's got Byron Mitchell right all over him. So Mitchell got his nose ahead of Beside note just before the checkered flag. Then Andrew Thomas, and he's just, just ahead there of Werner Swart. Nathan Victor will finish in 14th. Gary, and rounding off the top 15 will be Peter Hubert. He's two and a half seconds behind Nathan Victor. Ravi Javert will be the next man coming through in the uh, Marlboro car. Wellington Park, got CO, got ZA. Wow, well, it's, it's, it's iconic stuff. Iconic stuff. Ravi Javert, Etienne Swart, he's had a bit of uh, ups and downs. And he comes through just ahead there of Swayze Hubert. And only the first 18 cars on the lead lap. Swayze Hubert will get the checkered flag now. Robbie Teens is one lap down. And everybody else looks like got a DNF. Wow, interesting stuff. So there'll be a, uh, a short break between the two races. So uh, we're going to take a short break and we'll come back to you shortly. So, there is your podium, Heat 1 results, and your podium is Troy Dolacek, Johan Furi, and Willem Boerta. And as we said, only the first, well, it wasn't the first 18, it was the first, it is the first 18 cars that ended on the lead lap. Uh, Willem Boerta just off the podium, followed there by Luke Lucchese, and rounding off the top half a dozen is Jason Kutsia. I think Jason did a pretty decent job to uh, get as far as uh, what he got. Yaku Stein in the uh, Gazoo Others from Francois Hubert, Stephen McCarthy from Sujin Properties, Byron Mitchell in the Durant Motorsport Colors that uh, rounds out the top 10. Then just out the top 10 is a Clinton Beside note, and then Andrew Thomas, the man from uh, Racebook Media and Carbs and Coffee, and then Vanna Swart, Nathan Victor, Peter Hubert, Darby Hubert, Etienne Swart, and Swayze Hubert was the last man in P18 on the lead lap. So don't go away, folks. We've got a very short break. And then we come to you with race two. And if my facts are right, Gazza, they will invert the top 10, which means that Mitchell and McCarthy will be on the front row of the grid. And in wow. P9 and 10 will be Troy Dolacek, and in P10 will then be Yuri Swart. I think that'll be quite a biggie for Stephen McCarthy, the man that had a uh, lovely chat with us during the six hour uh, in the latter part of yesterday afternoon. And with a bit of luck, we'll be getting a couple of guys coming in on the Discord channel to uh, join us after this uh, second heat when we can get all the results together 
and give you the overall results. So uh, two minutes from now, we'll be coming back to you with the uh, start of race number two. Right, here we go with uh, the second race of the day. Uh, Frankie, well read up there on the regs. Byron Mitchell and Stephen McCarthy. Oh, how must they be feeling sitting there where they are right now? What do you do with this pack of cars that's behind you? And I mean, this is the guys that just beat you. So you know they're quicker than you. Well, you think they could be quicker than you. How, how do you react to all this? I don't think uh, Mitchell will have a problem with it because he's used to running up front. Um, Steve McCarthy, not, a, Steve. not, not, a, <laughs> look, Steve isn't a bad racing driver, but, uh, with all respect to Steve, he's not a Byron Mitchell and he knows that. And then, uh, the rest of the field comes through as the lights go off and away they go. And once again, a lovely start there by Byron Mitchell. Stephen McCarthy has gone all the way down to P8 so far. Exactly what I just said there. There's Nathan Victor. Somebody's gone farming that I think might be you free. I think it could be Johan Furi. Yes, it is. Johan has been sent packing, going into turn number one, going into Redgate. He uh, was sent packing there, and he has dropped all the way down that leaderboard. As a matter of fact, Johan is in 24th position, so not working out there for uh, Johan Furi at all. There was contact there. Oh, and the number three car. I think that was Stienkamp, if I'm not mistaken, that made contact there with uh, Johan Furi. And uh, Johan has now gone up one more position to 23rd, but he's in deep, deep trouble. Byron Mitchell is not in deep, deep trouble, that's for sure. But he does have Jacquistain, François Hubert, Jason Kutsir, Willem Boerta, Luc Lucchese, and Yuri Swart right there on his case. Lap number one, they are on now as uh, they work their way now towards the uh, S's. That was going down Starkey Strait towards the S's they go. Then uh, there's that little straight before they get into the Melbourne hairpin. Let's just have a look now if it's a, a right-handed hairpin. Yes, it is. That's going through Melbourne. And then uh, from there, they'll work their way uphill slightly towards Goddard's. And then lap number one will be in the bag directly after that. Look at Jakustein. He's right there in that second position. And somehow he's holding on to it. Jakustein, uh, Jason Kutsia, Francois Joubert, Luke Lucchese, Willem Boerta, Umpi Swart up to 7th place already. And the quickest time out there for Byron Mitchell. Well, I said, don't worry about Byron Mitchell. He's used to running at the sharp end of the field. Where Stephen McCarthy disappeared to? 
He's gone all the way down to P11 and he was in second position on the grid at this point in time. So when the intervals do uh, come up here between the drivers, we will see that there's nothing between them. A quick replay here at Steve McCarthy. Well, he was just gobbled up uh, right from the beginning and he went from P2 all the way down to out of the top 10, did McCarthy. And he's uh, boasting the Dale Earnhardt colors there on that motor car of his. Jason Kutsia and uh, Byron Mitchell, the two of them in first and second. But that Jason Kutsia uh, car is being uh, pounded there by Francois Hubert. In behind Francois Hubert is Luc Lucchese. Jakob Stein from six, uh, second down to fifth position. A bit of a gap behind him to Willem Boerter. Then there you see Nathan Victor. Uh, very specific colors. The uh, Clinton Bezaida note car is the next one coming through. Umpi Swart, there he comes now. Umpi Swart, oh, he's pushing very, very hard. That's going to cost him. He's going to put it right in the middle of the circle. But look how he gets gobbled up on both sides. Yeah, Donna Check and uh, Stephen McCarthy got him. So did Peter Hubert for that matter. And right on his case now is the Repsol Honda of uh, Tristan de Nobriga. So he is all over the back there of him. As a matter of fact, look at that train of cars behind Dollar Check. It sits there in P9. There must be about 10 of them within a second. That's all over the back of Dollar Check. And as a matter of fact, look at the guys behind Jason Kutsia. That's in that second position. He's been mugged there by Luke Lacchese, Jacquista, and François Hubert, Willem Boerta, Nathan Victor, and Clinton beside the note. That's a group of cars you see on your screen there with the Nathan Victor getting off track uh, and getting back on there just ahead of a Clinton. Beside note, Francois Hubert is in there as well. He's just over one and a half seconds behind Clinton. Beside note is Hubert there in P8 and doing a little bit of farming and that uh, will drop him down the leaderboard as he's going to go all the way down to 14th position. Oh, that was a massive, massive one. Nathan Victor just made the move now on the Clinton Beside note. Ooh, Ooh, trouble. There was contact and Beside note went onto the grass. And there's a little bit of how's your mommy as he comes back onto the circuit. Yeah. The two of them now running side by side. Nothing much. Nathan Victor, Troy Dolinchik's in the horse car there behind him. Troy Dolinchik has got the drive. He's going to dissect the two of them. He's going to pop it up on that inside line. Can you make it stick? Yes, he does. <laughs> well, I think Nathan Victor, mm -mm, here, here, here comes Troy. He's not going to back out. He's just going to come straight through the middle of the island. Just the Nobriga starting to come into play this time as well. Yeah, well, uh, he was just hammered there. Victor was hammered there by Andre Stienkamp, I think it is, in that number three. Uh, well, it says three on the side there. Uh, have a look and see if it is Stienkamp. I'm not sure if it is Andre Stienkamp, though as they make their way through i don't know if, is andre stenkamp in this one no. no he's not so that three that that's got the uh livery on the side there we'll have a look and see who that one is i think that's McCar M mccarthy although yes i think it could be mccarthy i do apologize there to andre stenkamp as uh Bowden mitchell leads him out but jason could see in that second position followed there by luke lucchese and yaku stein is all over the back of lucchese we go a bit further down because dollar check has got Clinton beside note for company. And this is a big one. Dollar check in P6. And they are racked and stacked from P7 all the way down to make that P14 all over the back of Dollar check. Because he's 2.3 seconds behind Willem Boerta. Umpi Swart is in there. He's just behind uh, Clinton beside note. But that's the man, Bowden Mitchell up front, running it off the circuit, leader. sliding it uh, slightly. But uh, no problems out there for Byron Mitchell as he sits out there in P1. Look at them flashing lights there. That is Yuri Swart that's flashing lights. And he has been hassled heavily there by Clinton beside an out. And there's contact behind beside and It's Nathan Victor that tumbles down that leaderboard. Uh, well, Nathan Victor, I think, was the one. Yeah, he just, I think he got the left hand back slightly off the circuit. And uh, luckily, he gets the nose lined up and can get going pretty quickly. But not a lot of traction. Uh, at that stage so you've really got a battle to get the hammer down let's go uh, to the top end of the field and let's run down from there Byron Mitchell having uh, just gone off circuits now being closed down by Jason Kutsia then it's Luke Lucchese a good run for Luke Lucchese Yaku Stein in that fourth position brilliant drive ahead there of uh, the Gazoo car of Willem Boerter Troy Dolinchik starting to close up Umpi Swart from 10th the winner of race number one up into seventh position 
Tintin beside nuts in the uh, Stu Davidson car. Then Stephen McCarthy. Well, as you said, he got gobbled up, but he didn't drop any further back from that. He finds himself back in that 10th position. And look at this dogfight behind him. Yeah, I don't know why I called Stephen McCarthy under Andre Steenkamp earlier on. So <laughs> my apologies there too, Andre. But yes, there's a hell of a fight going on in there behind Stephen McCarthy. Yuan uh, Fury is working his way back. So is Peter Hubert and Justin De Nobriga. They all over the back there of Beside and Out. Behind the Nobriga, it's Andrew Thomas. Uh, behind him, it's Robbie Teens, Wagner Swartz, Swayze Hubert, and Nathan Victor. That's all the way down now in 17th position. Remember, he got sent packing earlier on, and uh, he trying to make his way back through. And he's 1.3 seconds behind Swayze Hubert, but he in turn has been hassled there by Sandra Bacari and by Francois Hubert. So there's a lot of fighting going all the way from P9 behind Stephen McCarthy right down to that 19th position. That's Johan Fury that's closing on the back end there of Stephen McCarthy. Brings with him Peter Hubert. Just Nobrega up on the... Oh! Just the Nobrega takes out Johan Fury and then just for good measure knocks into him again. Johan Fury just says, well, I'm just going to turn it right around here. Comes across the front of Sandra Bacari and uh, Francois Hubert. But is that car going to handle that is something else it's taken a bad bad knock it's just not working out for him whatsoever let's have a look at oh, that oh it's one. turning itself around it's all yeah. over the place oh and into him goes bakari and he's in deep trouble because that uh, car's broken yeah that car is wrecked he's gonna have to take it into pit lane that car is crabbing that car is in all sorts of trouble let's see how that affected the uh, francois hubert he came along uh, quite happily no problems whatsoever was uh, Francois Hubert and nowhere to go. And uh, he went into the back of Sandra Bakari and then uh, everything else was happening on the outside of the circuit at that stage of the fight. So uh, not working out for you, Hanfari. He comes back out of the pit. So this time it's all about Byron Mitchell. And there is Jason Garcia in that second position. Look the case, one of his best results uh, in one of these type of races for a long time. And Yaku Stein with the uh, new calibration on the new steering looks like it's working very well he's got the highly acclaimed villain Boerter in there behind him Troy Dolinchik uh, well he's making that horse car very quick behind the Toyota Gazoo racing car and looks like Troy's trying to break up into the top five yeah and he's been hassled there by uh, Yuri Swart as a matter of fact the two of them are all over the back of uh, Willem Boerter, Dolinchik and uh, Yuri Swart as uh, the two of them are crowding the back end of that Toyota Gazoo outfit. That is the Hyundai of uh, Bota. His uh, last and best lap is a 137.901. And he's gone up two positions in this race as Willem Bota. We ride aboard with Willem Bota looking out the rear window there. And he sees that uh, Haas Audi of Dollar Check right there with him. As Bota goes wide and Bota runs wide onto the dirt. And Willem Boerta will lose two positions there. As a matter of fact, Boerta will lose out to Troy Dolacek and to Yuri Umpi Swart. Yep, there goes Umpi Swart and there's a Troy in the horse car just ahead of him. There's Troy Dolacek. Now, look at the distance between the two of them and uh, the man that's having the race of his life. That's Yaku Stein. Yaku Stein holding on to the back of Mr. Luke Lukesi. Luke Lukesi holding on to Jason Kutsia. And, uh, well, Byron Mitchell, he's got a bit of breathing space, but it's not a lot. It's all big names in behind Byron Mitchell. Yeah, well, the Duran boys are sitting in P1 and P2 and P6 at this point in time. That's Mitchell, Kutsia and Swart. So, Luke Lucchese there in that third place, making his way out. Uh, we have a look and see where he's going now. That could have been through the S's. I think it might just be the S's heading down towards the Melbourne Hairpin. There's Dollar Check. Right behind him is Yuri Swat. Yep, they're making their way through the Melbourne Hairpin. Then Willem Bota is there in that seventh place. Going through Melbourne now. It was Clinton Beside note. Then a Peter Joubert goes to Melbourne Hairpin. But he's got Stephen McCarthy, Andrew Thomas and Robbie Teens there. That's the four cars that you see there in view as you ride aboard now with mr uh racebook media himself andrew thomas and they are going to force you bad wide is he going to go through with the steve mccarthy no he doesn't peter you stays in there peter you as a matter of fact is now sitting side by side with steve mccarthy gary 
as they head into Redgate. Well, it looks like carrying the speed around the outside is not all bad, but nope, it's not going to work out. It's going to be Pity Hubert that's going to uh, take that position. Uh, and uh, Steve McCarthy that uh, ended up in a 10th position and then uh, on the restart found himself on the front row of the grid. He's now back to pretty much where he was, but in a lovely dice, no doubt. If you look at uh, the gaps between Jason, Luke, Yaku and Troy, they all around about the one to one and a half seconds. Umpi Swart closed up on his next victim. There it is, Umpi Swart on the back of Troy Dolinchik. Yeah, two tenths of a second between uh, Dolinchik and uh, Swart. But I want to go back to that fight that's raging on here behind Peter Hubert. Because we were riding aboard with Andrew Thomas and uh, Robbie Teens was on the case of uh, Thomas as well. So it's a massive, massive fight going on out there for McCarthy's ninth position. And look, Steve McCarthy is sideways. And in a knot here is uh, Peter Hubert. He finds himself in trouble coming out of the S's and also trouble, as I said earlier on, for Stephen McCarthy. Look how they just barrel past him down to that uh, 16th position. So uh, it all started off with uh, Andrew Thomas as they went into the corner. There you can see he gets it completely sideways. He straightens it out, but then he eventually goes off the circuit. Stephen McCarthy found himself uh, in a position that he just couldn't recover from, and he got tipped right around, gets himself onto the grass, doesn't want to uh, get involved with anybody else and uh, mess up anybody else's race, takes his time getting back onto the circuit, and they just all keep on piling past him. That's dropped him a long, long way down, down to 16th and into the pit. So definitely a little bit of damage there. Yaku Stein onto the back of Luke Lukizi. Imagine if Yaku Stein passes Luke Lukizi. Oh, that's not that impossible. Be, it's, it, well, how many times have you ever seen anybody pass Luke Lukizi if Luke is on the circuit? Luke tends to push it very hard and sometimes goes off. That's when people pass him. I can't remember when last we commentated on somebody going one-on-one -on -one with Luke Lukizi and actually getting past him. Well, I think uh, Luke might be getting a bit further down the road from Yakustan. It was 16th, it's 18th, it's now 19th. It's going to be a minute that is going to be ahead there of Yakustan. But the Swayze Schubert is all over the back of Peter Hubert. And that's a fight there for that 10th position. That is Swayze and Swayze gets his nose ahead of Peter Hubert. The two Huberts are having their own fight out there. And that's for that final top 10 uh, position as the field goes through. Franco Hubert all the way down in 15th position. And uh, he is in the uh, Hyundai. He's uh, Franco Hubert. But we go back to that fight there between Troy Dolacek and Yuri Swart. 15 minutes done. Five more minutes on, to go on the clock. And he is tucked in right there behind him. Dolacek has been attacked there by Yuri Swart. There's a tenth of a second between the two of them. Dolacek in the Haas car. And uh, Umpi Swart in the Durant Motorsport outfit. Through the right hander they go. As uh, he is still crowding the back end there of the Dolacek outfit. As uh, we go back to Willem Boerta. And uh, Willem Boerta is 1.8 seconds behind uh, Clinton Beside Note that you see just coming into your screen there now with that Davidson sponsored Audi. Well it looks like Mumpi Swart's on the attack once again look at that he's closed right up very very close uh, is uh, Yuri Swart. I don't think Droid Kolinchik is intending to give that position away for all to the likes of Mumpi Swart. There you see first second third fourth fifth and sixth all of them uh, initially there in the very same shot. Time is beginning to run out now we have got four minutes on the clock and dollar check and swat that's the only fight uh, out there well that's the one for fifth position there's a humongous one going on for 11th position we'll go down there now and that is the fight for p11 for uh, peter hubert as we stay here for now with the yuri umpi swart and he is right on the back there of dollar check that is dollar check and swart and that is that fight there for troy's fifth position as we've done 16 and a half minutes of this 20 minute race nothing much between them whatsoever they're starting to close now onto the back of yaku stain yaku was closing on the back of luke Lukizi. he must have had a little bit of a slow uh, exit to a corner because now he's been closed up from behind 
probably his best result ever to the best of my knowledge in this form of motorsport finding himself right up there in the top line is uh, Jakob Stein. Can he hold on just a little bit longer while well, they're closing in on him pretty fast? Yeah, all right. On his case, now, as a matter of fact, Dolacek is going to make the move there on Jakob Stein, but Jakob Stein is not going to give up. He's not going to give that fourth position up. He must be careful while defending against Dolacek. He might lose that position there to uh, Swart Choo! as the three of them are nearly side by side. That was making their way out of Copper's Corner. Now they're racing down Starkey Strait. And uh, I tell you this for nothing, that Jakob Stein is going to make it hard for them through the S as they go. Working their way down to Melbourne Eppen. And the inside line there for Melbourne belongs to Dolacek. Dolacek surely will nail him going into Melbourne. He's going to hang on for dear life, but Dolacek has got the line. As a matter of fact, Umpi Swart has got the line now. He gets bumped out the way there by Jakub Stein <laughs> and says no. But now Dolacek, he's got that uh, position ahead of him. And umpi has got the line there for Goddard's. <laughs> it's as close, as close as what it gets as they uh, crossed one another's bows. There was nothing much in it. Uh, just keep an eye on the uh, leaderboard. There's a half a second between Luke Lukesi and uh, Jason Katsia with less than two minutes to go. We don't want to lose uh, sight of that one at all. There's just a little bit further up the road. Let's have a quick shofty at that one. There's the two of them. That's the gap. Uh, Byron Mitchell uh, ahead of those two. Jason Kutsia, Luke Lukesi, and then back to the fight. We were busy with Troy Dolinchek in the house car ahead of Umpi Swart in the uh, team colors. And they've just got past the man that put this series together. And that is Yaku Stein. I think Yaku will be happy with the P6 because he's comfortably ahead of Willem Boerta. Five uh, seconds, just over five seconds, he is ahead there of Willem Boerta. So you've got a minute and ten seconds left on the clock. And we watch this fight going out there for three, four and five. But we go back to the one for second and third position between uh, Jason Kutsia of Duran Motorsport and Luke Lekezi of Pantera Racing. And then Dolacek coming through. Behind him is Umpi Swart. Behind him is Yaku Stein. Yaku not letting the two of them go away. Uh, he's only six tenths of a second in there. And Luke Lekez, he's still all over the back end of Jason Kutsia with 40 seconds left on the clock before we see the checkered flag. Almost forgot about the fact that Byron Mitchell is uh, ahead. Well, Umpi Swart did it in race number one. He had 5.7 seconds, if I remember correctly. And uh, now you've got a situation where Byron Mitchell has managed to take uh, 2.8 out of the rest of the pack. There's that fight for second and third. And then uh, that fight going on behind that, that is Troy Dolinchik, Umpi Swart, and a Yaku Stein that's not exactly being dropped whatsoever. Let's go to the leader of this race. He's done it so well. We've actually almost forgotten about him up front. The superstar, Byron Mitchell. Working his way now through the Krono curves. That's where he's going now. And uh, through Starkey's Bridge, he'll be making his way to uh, McLean's. He's got that slight left-hander coming up there. And then he should be going into the right-hander. That is McLean's heading towards the end of the lap. Let's have a look and see if he goes up the hill towards Coppice. As we go back, that fight for second and third position. Yep, heading towards Coppice. He's making his way towards the checkered flag. Now he's at uh, Byron Mitchell as the... Uh, that fight for three, four, and five makes its way out of Coppice, which means that the race leader will be heading towards the S's. Yep, there he goes through the S's now. And uh, that is Byron Mitchell working his way down towards the Melbourne Hairpin. That is the second last corner of the circuit. Uh, and that's still that fight there between Dolacek and Swart. The leader would have been making his way out of Melbourne now. There he goes. One more corner to go for him. That will be turn 11, the left-handed hairpin that is known as Goddard's. Through Goddard's he goes, you see his brake lights comes on. And onto the home straight and victory in race two for Byron Mitchell. What a brilliant drive there by him. Well, he did so well that he actually dumped it into the wall straight as after he went uh, over the line. And everybody else having lots of fun as they come across the line and just spinning it across a while. They're, they're having lots of fun. Let's rather stay away from that lot. Let's go a yeah. little bit further back. Don't, don't go there because that's go. not fun. That's silly. That's uh, a little bit further back. There's Clinton Bezade note coming through. And then the next man is uh, Robbie Teens. Behind Robbie Teens will be Swayce Hubert. And then Van Swart just outside of the top 10. A lovely drive there by our new guy Van Swart. 
the next one behind that will be Johan Berea. It just did not work out for Johan today. Yeah, Johan will finish in 12th position, 9.2 seconds behind Van Zwart. And then we'll have Etienne Swart coming to the line. And he will have Hammer Lazarus and François Hubert right in his case. And it will be Lazarus who gets to the flag ahead of François Hubert. Then Andrew Thomas will get home just ahead of Renier Hubert. And then all the way down in 18th position is a Tristan de Nobrega, but he was involved in that contact earlier on with uh, Johan Fourie. And that whole front end of uh, de Nobrega's car was completely rearranged. So the rest of the guys just making their way uh, over the uh, start-finish line and uh, then just throwing those cars around with wild abandon to uh, celebrate, which I personally don't think is the right thing to do. But yeah, um, we can't tell them what they must do. So there's the uh, results of what's regarded as the feature race. So Byron Mitchell winning it out by 3.4 as opposed to Uti Swart in uh, the first race. From Jason Kutsia, Luke Lucchese. So uh, Duran Motorsport being split once again, like yesterday, by Luke Lucchese in that third position. From Umpi Swart and then uh, the privateer, Troy Dolinchik, the uh, young uh, karting ace from uh, Cape Town that's now taking part in the Extreme Festival with uh, some serious big prize money and an overseas drive uh, possible for him at the end of the season if he can win out on that. Yeah, he does the Formula 1600s, does a Troy Dollar check, and then just out the top uh, five is uh, Yaku Stein for Gazoo Racing, then uh, Willem Boerta, Clinton Bessena, Robbie Teings, and Swiss Hubert round off your top ten. Behind that, Van Swart, Johan Ferry also didn't work out for him. And, uh, well, what can I say? Uh, Etienne Swart, Hermann Lazarus, Francois Hubert rounding out the top 15. Yeah, then Andrew uh, Thomas is in there, Rainier Hubert, followed by Tristan uh, de Nobriga, Sandra Bakari, Nathan Victor, Andrew Murray, and uh, Stephen McCarthy was the last driver on the lead lap. Everybody else was one lap or more down behind McCarthy. So don't forget about the results of heat number one. This is what it looked like. It was Umpi Swart, Troy Dolinchik, Johan Ferry picking up third in that one. Uh, Luke in, uh, picking up fifth in that one. Jakku a seventh. So a sixth and a seventh for Jakku Very good. Let's see if we can pick up the overall results. That is the... Uh, oh, that's, that's heat, heat one, yeah. One. No, it doesn't look like it's going to want to give us that uh, overall results as such. So that is the results that we are going to be able to give to you up till this point. Let's just have a look for interest sake. How did it look in the qualifying session? Um, and how did they end up? Umpi, yep, Johan Ferry, well, he was on the front row of the grid. And uh, he didn't manage to really take use of those opportunities. Troy Dolinchik and Byron Mitchell in the top five stayed there. Luke Lucchese in the top five. Another one that qualified very well, Frankie, was Tristan de Nobrega. And uh, Tristan didn't manage to be able to uh, make good use of that one at all. It didn't work out for them. No, not in the uh, second race. It didn't work out for him at all. There was contact between himself and uh, Johan Fury, and that put both him and Johan way, way down the field. So... A brilliant race event coming to you from the UK, from Donington Park uh, Raceway for another round of the Touring Car Championship brought to you by Mr. Yaku Stein of Malemba Lodge. A big thanks there to Yaku. Well, with a 7th and a 6th for Yaku and the man that sponsors the series, I'll give you my driver of the day. Oh, I think so too. I, I think there was a brilliant drive there by him, no doubt about it. So that was brilliant stuff. That was round number three of season number two. Two more to go. Malembo Lodge, if you need the accommodation up north around about the uh, Joburg, uh, Pretoria area, keep that one in mind. That lodge has been now made available for uh, members of the public to come in there as well and make use of those facilities. Thank you. That was great. That was awesome. Touring cars are always, always, always brilliant. Yeah, I know. Touring cars is brilliant. It doesn't get much better than than touring cars. And uh, this coming Wednesday, we're not done yet because we're going to go back to the iRacing Master Series, Gary, where we are racing the Daytona 
it's not called a Daytona prototype, but it's uh, one of the Daytona cars, and it will be at the Daytona circuit, but it will be the infield, the course circuit, not the oval. And this will be this coming Wednesday for the iRacing Master Series. And we will see you then. Yep, from my side, Gary Fleming, on behalf of Second Year Production Studio, from Kenneth, Gary Fleming, they joined you, Mike side. Look forward to seeing you at a racetrack in the not too distant future. Good night, everybody.